Call of Duty. What makes a great Call of Duty game? Today, we will be diving into one of the greatest games that stapled my childhood, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. What is up everybody? My name is Devin and welcome to the Devinator Gaming Channel. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you do enjoy this video. And be sure to hit the notification bell to see more videos like this one where I will be going into all the games that we used to play and why they were so great and give us a good nostalgia trip back when times were a little bit simpler. So jumping right in, most of you are if not familiar have at least heard or played the remastered version of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. They're from the infamous game chat lobbies that made us all hard, hardened trash talking veterans. Starting with the campaign though, what an excellent example of a hardcore action packed campaign. From the first few levels after you learn the controls and how to play the game. From there on, all action. Storming an entire Afghan city and then heading into a snow covered Russian base where you meet up with Soap McTavish, one of the staple characters in the Modern Warfare series. Also, being able to play as not only a member of the Task Force 1 for 1, but as a U.S. soldier, something I always found quite enjoyable, keeping the story fresh from mission to mission and seeing how the different views of how a war of that scale would actually be fought. Not to mention, no Russian in the first act. One of a, the most highly controversial levels and missions in any video game in entire history. All in the first act of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Act 2 brings us the rescue of Captain Price, another staple character in the Modern Warfare series. And we also see the United States Army take the fight to Russia on American soil, which is something that not a lot of games, in at least the United States anyway, portray. It's not something that ever really happens. The, you don't see fights of what could happen on United States soil. Act 3 brings us to the finale of the game. General Shepard killing Ghost and Roach, one of the biggest plot twists and pull at the heartstrings in video game history. Tracking him down, killing him in Rust, where a lot of beef would be settled in the multiplayer action multiplayer portion of this video pushing the Russians out of the White House in just all-out warfare in the hunt of Price fighting US Army and Makarov's men through scrapyard the game also offers a spec ops mode which uh, I never really played too much of but was an okay addition and kind of an answer for the popular World at War third mode zombies the goal was to earn three stars in each mission more stars the higher the difficulty and completing each spec ops mission task unlocking these stars unlocked new areas that uh, echo bravo charlie etc all the way up till echo the 40 stars it was just something kind of fun giving some replay value and, and something to kind of work for if multiplayer wasn't your thing and you kind of wanted to take some of those campaign missions and, and modes to the next level. And now, finally and certainly not least, the multiplayer. This is where Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 really gets its, in my personal opinion, its rep. Uh, the multiplayer, everything from the calling cards and emblems, kill streaks, maps, weapons, were all a, brush, a breath of fresh air from the groundwork of its predecessor, Modern Warfare. The highest kill streak being the tactical nuke, requiring an incredible 25 kills in a row without dying. All of it being set up with the perfect class to survive and kill efficiently, quickly, silently, all playing a factor in getting the illustrious nuke. Along with the 352 challenges to earn calling cards, not including the weapon mastery calling cards. Paired with 314 different emblems you can unlock this game was full of challenge and something to work towards. There was always something to do and as a completionist that was my goal to try and accomplish every challenge in the barracks and earn those calling cards to display my dominance and everybody was showing their dominance off by getting that spinning nuke emblem. 
The maps were also fantastic, from the village and the slums of Favela to the crashed airplanes of Scrapyard. They were some of the most excellent maps with tons of diversity and settings, some of the most diverse setting that we've ever seen in Call of Duty. It also helped with play styles, whether you were a tactical rusher or you scanned the outside of the maps or you played any way you wanted. These maps were good for you. They could play however you played your play style. And each one seemed to not ever be better than the other. There were good maps, but they all were very playable, unlike most Call of Duties today where, in my opinion, I only like one or two maps or in the case of the recent Modern Warfare shoot house and ship and, and a very few other maps and in Cold War only really looking forward to you know <laughs> Nuketown or Crossroads Strike there's a few and they have specific game modes for them where those are your staple maps and those are your most popular and honestly I don't even play the regular multiplayer anymore and then that brings me to the weapons each one seeming not better than the other, but different all in the same time. The camos, many, many camos to unlock to show that you are the master of that said weapon, to unlock the calling cards showing that you have mastered that weapon and that you will dominate whoever steps in your way with said weapon. This is also a period of time where YouTube was surging with players and growing in popularity and really created a Call of Duty community and really stepped up. It's It was unheard of. You could see high kill streak gameplays, knife only, best class setups, you name it. There was a video on YouTube for it and provided entertainment for hours if you could not play the game or if you were just looking to up your game and get that edge, something of entertainment, anything. It was all on YouTube. And this was started and really made a staple by Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. But it's not without its cons. Uh, you definitely have the one-man army noob tubing, which was super annoying. Uh, with just the sacrifice of your secondary weapon in the first perk slot, any player could constantly use one-man army and load in their noob tubing class and rinse and repeat this process. You didn't have to die to restock your noob tubes you just kept going and another broken perk was commando with this perk you basically knifed and the range was significantly increased and was a great third slot pick for those sticky situations that you found yourself in playing this game while on the uh giving end was very satisfactory on the receiving end was controller breaking induced rage but this is to say that Modern Warfare 2 had a very good ground set by its predecessor, Modern Warfare, amping up its kill streaks. Really, I mean, upping the campaign, upping the kill streaks, upping the weapon customization, everything that you could have asked for in Modern Warfare to be upgraded on in its sequel. Modern Warfare 2 done in simply a cinch, and it was done very well. And really, multiplayer was the biggest staple in this game, in this game's lifestyle, life period. The campaign was absolutely amazing, full of plot twists. Uh, the biggest one being Ghost and Roach's killing by General Shepard. And then the No Russian mission. Two big, big heart pulling and disturbing and crazy missions all in the same game this was something that how they kept you hooked uh, infinity ward done a great job with this and the spec ops missions were a good you know third option you hop on you're waiting for your buddies to get online and you don't really feel like playing anything by yourself you're just waiting and you get on there and you can do it i thought yeah i think i'm pretty sure you can do it with more than one person just yourself but this is something where you can just kind of pass the time earn your i'm pretty sure there are some achievements for it too just hop on there and and you earn your achievements, get your stars, get your 100% completion. Not really was my thing. I didn't spend a too terrible amount of time on Spec Ops, but it was there. 
But with that being said, this is what made Call of Duty a great game. The campaign, breathtaking. The multiplayer, absolutely amazing. The killstreaks, the guns, the customization, the chats, everything. This was a game that you look forward to going home after school or after work or whatever it was for you. And you look forward to playing this game. And that's what made this game great. And this is where Call of Duty needs to head its roots back. This is all I have to say about Modern Warfare 2 and why it was such a great game. If you do leave a comment uh, explaining why you liked Modern Warfare 2 or why you didn't like Modern Warfare 2 or what your favorite Call of Duty is in general in the series. And if you think this is the path that Trey or Treyarch and Infinity War need to take to. But be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Next week, we will be diving into why Halo Reach was such an amazing game and what made it so great for us to play. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.